Mati Artisari, former president of Finland, thank you for joining us today. You're introducing the fourth uh, European debate on identity with the title uh, Europe is stronger than you think if we reinvent ourselves. Why is that? Why do you think that Europe is stronger than we think? Perhaps it reflects my attitude in life in, in general. I'm an eternally displaced person. I was born in Karelia, which Soviet Union took from Finland and attacked my country and 400,000 of us had to be replaced in the rest of Finland. And I have been working my, most of my life with conflicts and their res resolution and, and I have said even there that all conflicts in the world can be solved. It's only the lack of political will that, that is, is missing in those frozen conflicts that we have not been uh, able to solve. Therefore, I, I think far too much of negativism is in, in the world in general. And sometimes I think that in today's world the media also wants to invent conflicts even if they are there, not there, because that gets the attention of, the, of the, those who they want to read their uh, uh, media. So this is a sort of sensationalism? Not only that, but I, I think it's, it's, it's a fight for, for, in print media for instance, uh, it's a, a, a very serious fight for, for the readers, but the sort of quality analysis is, is left to very much academics and, and they don't necessarily get the attention that they, they to my mind, deserve. And we have seen worst crisis that we are going through at the moment. I mean, that, that should be clear for anyone. And you don't need to be as old as I am to, to realize that because I was born with, before the Second World War. And therefore, I don't accept that, that we, we somehow take as a starting point that this is downhill now. We, it is going to take time. But, but I hope that my, my speech today will, will encourage everyone to move forward and, and, and come with the solutions, because those we have to find. Obviously Europe is facing a financial crisis, it's a global financial crisis, but commentators also say that we're facing a crisis of values. Are European, uni are European values uh, facing a crisis? I don't think so, because when, when the Arab Spring started, I was actually very pleased what happened because my reaction was that this was historic development, what happened in, in Egypt, Libya and, and, and Tunisia to start with. Because after that, no one can say that democracy, human rights, freedom of expression, rule of law, are Western values. They are, they have always been universal values and the people who went to Tahir Square, they, they showed it to the world that yes, these are universal values. And if, if I think what they have to go through in order to establish a democratic society, that will take generations. So we, have, we are in a much, much better, it helps to compare and, and look and you start looking at your problems in a slightly more relative terms than, than, than very often people do. But we, if we look at European countries, some of the more established democracies mm. uh, in Europe today, there is nevertheless what many perceive to be a general rise in extremist thinking, in prejudice, in, in racism. Is that something that, firstly, is, is that true? And is that something that we can tackle? No, first of all, I, if I look at my own society, because we have also a an, 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 an populist party, but when I look at those people, and I know some uh, uh, people who have joined the party from different old established political parties, why have they, they rallied very charismatic leader uh, in, in this case? Like it is very often that there is a charismatic leader. Perhaps because they have felt that no one listens to them in a society. It happens every now and then. 
they complain that the elites are only talking to each other and they are not listening to us and that we have real concerns unemployment which is with pestering now now Europe like it's pestering uh, United States as well just looked the discussion in, in, in TV this morning and so I, I think we I look I'm not so concerned actually about this sort of movement because sooner or later they have to deliver you can't simply be criticizing the others you have to join the, join the government you can't always say that we don't want to join and when you join the government you realize what the problems are and furthermore I think in today's world the big ideologies have lost their importance if one looks at the time during the Cold War era now I when I looked we have we have a, a big coalition in, in my country so they have to tackle with 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 concrete problems and find solutions so it's not that you can go to your ideology and, and find an answer to every problem that you are facing there are that those times are over and that's why it's also difficult for uh, established old respectable political parties to maintain their supporters because the playing field has has to my mind changed what would you say to people who who claim that Europe is in decline no I, I think if you say that it is in decline my said what are you going to do is to stop it because I I don't think anyone in 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 today's world can can escape the responsibility first of all I, w I would ask did you vote no I didn't no no then I mean you should shut up if you don't even use your right to 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 vote then then uh, perhaps we should take you the right that you can't even criticize when when uh, so we have to challenge the people and, and ask them what is their solution to these problems if we want if you say that there's a decline how what is your answer to that but do you think that Europe has a role to play in terms of promoting certain values in terms of improving life ar around the world no I'm I come from the uh, one of the Nordic countries and and as I explained to you I have I, I'm very Nordic because I have 12.5 percent of according to the researchers Norwegian and same amount of Swedish blood I'm really Nordic and that explains why I feel very very Scandinavian and European and world citizen as well so if I look at the world today we don't need and I have said this in many speeches and I I, I think you will hear me say it in one way or another today as well that we don't need raw capitalism we don't need any sort of socialism we need responsible market economy which the Nordic development model represents at its best there's nothing better in the world if you look at any comparison and there are plenty of them that we are running a, a fair and just society I was going to say it's very very tightly linked to specific values isn't it the Nordic no, it model. is but those are the European values it's not only the Nordic countries we see similar uh, decisions made in Germany in Netherlands uh, so so good and well I don't think this is a monopoly for my part of the world but the important thing is that we should create growth and be competitive in, in the globalized world which is much more complicated than it used to be in the old times and and then we should give every citizen whether you rich or poor a good start in life by providing first class education and then every citizen in my part of the world my message to them is which we have sometimes forgotten to tell them is that you have to use these opportunities that the state provides you <clears throat> because everyone is is in responsible for his or her own life and, and and career it doesn't come 
but the facilitation of, of good education is a remarkable equalizer in, in a society. And I can't help reminding people who are listening that when economists wrote the story that if you want to experience an American dream, go to Sweden. <laughs> in other words, that this transformation from one social class to another still works in... Or he could, they, the writer could have mentioned any of us in the Nordic countries. It's, I'm a good example of that myself. So Europe is stronger than we think if we reinvent ourselves. Yes. What's the reinvention part then? What reinvention that is that, that egalitarian policies are absolutely vital. If I think we have in, in we have very often when we look at the third world we have we have demanded and in Europe too we have demanded better elections. But there has been less attention to the what happens when people come to power. Are they actually running egalitarian policies so that people get a chance and 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 move forward in, in, in life and enrich themselves culturally and economically? Uh, or are they more interested in enriching themselves who come to power? And that goes, I think we should include the whole world. <clears throat> Quite frankly, I would like to have a similar study done in, in, in Europe, what Mo Ibrahim Foundation has done for a few years now on Africa. It's a governance index. All 54 African countries have been put in the order of of, of their performance, <clears throat> they are looked in four different categories and there are over 80 different aspects of good governance that are being looked. And, and I'm delighted that my, my friends in Southern Africa have done rather well. Namibians are, I, are they fifth or sixth last year. Uh, Botswana is, is third or fourth and South Africa is in between these two. That's, and Tanzania, which is close to me, is, is was 10th. So uh, people can see how their country is doing. And they can start discussing that why we are in those countries where, for instance, internal fighting has been taking place, they are on the bottom of the list. You could have seen that something is going to happen in Libya because I think they were 51st few years ago in political participation in that country. I would like similar one to be done about Council of Europe, 47 countries. But, but that, that is something that if it's ever done, because I would like it to be covering the same principles that Africa is done at the moment throughout the world, so that we have comparative data. Very interesting suggestion. Thank you very much. And thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you.